Hello everybody, welcome to a new tutorial from Sound for More, it's Leo speaking. Um, today I have the pleasure to introduce you to Branchy from Willow and Hawk, a fantastic uh, semi-modular synth. Before I continue, I would like to remind my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel. Thank you very much. So, Branches works as a standalone, but as, but it also works as an AUV3 um, app. So in this case, I'm running it inside AUM. So I've just created a audio channel. I have instantiated it there, and, the, and, and then I have connected just my wireless controller. So let's open it up. So as you can see, you have a number of modules which are present on the screen and the user interface is quite nice. So let's start with uh, this one at the bottom left, which is the MIDI input. And from here you have signals which are coming in from, in this case, the external controller that I have connected to AUM. So you have two channels, channel one and channel two. For each channel, um, we are receiving messages for pitch, bend, velocity, gate, and modulation. So you can see that for channel number one and also for channel number two. As well, here at the bottom, you have messages for the clock, which will be coming from uh, AUM, similar to the start and stop event, which will occur when I click play and stop on AUM. As you can see, the sync, there is the pitch is connected to the pitch on this modulation oscillator and is also connected to the pitch of the complex oscillator. Indeed, uh, branches has two oscillators, one which is used to modulate, for example, in this case, the complex oscillator, because indeed the first one has the ability to modulate the second one from a frequency perspective and also from an amplitude perspective. Okay, the two oscillators are connected to two low pass gate, as you can see here. Okay, so the left one here is connected to the first oscillator and the second one here is connected to the complex oscillator. So they're hardwired internally, similar to the fact that the first oscillator is hardwired in terms of modulating by frequency and amplitude the complex oscillator. The two low pass gates are then connected to the main output and as they go through the main output, they also go through the delay and the reverb. So you have two effects as well. So at, as you can see also, you have the gate here coming from channel number one, which is connected to the gate input here of this envelope mode, uh, mod, um, module. And uh, as, you, as you can see, all, all the modules, if they have an arrow pointing inside, it means it's an input. If they have an arrow pointing outside, it means it's an output. So in this case, uh, there is a gate signal, which is coming in into the envelope, which is a traditional ADSR. So attack the case sustained release and then the output is connected to this low pass gate okay and which of course will take a signal from the complex oscillator i just just explained you use low pass gate to control the volume of course but also to control the filter okay for the output of the of the oscillator which is connected to that low pass gate of course in this case we are using the envelope to control the amount here and you can see what you see um, an icon like this pointing down with a narrow pointing inside it means that that connection is used to modulate this, this particular parameter so in this case the amount of the low pass gate okay so in this but you can also um, adjust the level here of the oscillator which in this case is the complex oscillator the similar you can do in the other one and this one will be for the modulator oscillator okay and you can adjust your response or filter here okay for each one of those now let's play a little bit with the keyboard so you can hear yeah, just a standard um, synth tone which is generated by the complex oscillator and it is a sound wave because it, by default the complex oscillator has a sound wave so the pitch changes from the keyboard because the signal is coming from this MIDI input through the pitch here. Okay, so other parameters here on the complex oscillator, you can adjust the tune. Minus and plus seven uh, semitones, and you can double click to go back to the default setting. You can adjust the rates as well. You can um, also add some harmonics to that sound waveform. And of course you can modulate that as well but additionally you can blend that sine wave to other um, 
to another waveform, which you can select from being triangle, so way or square. And you use this dial, which can be further modulated to blend between the two. Okay, so it's very straightforward. When it comes to the modulator oscillator, of course, you need to, um, let's connect the, um, the gate. So we click on here, this is how it works. So if you have a connection already established uh, through a wire, like in this case, you see a symbol for the lead, a bin, if you click on that, you remove the connection. But in any case, if you click on uh, one point, then you can click to the next one to establish the connection. So in this case, we are driving, using the env envelope to drive the amount here for the low pass gate, which is the left one, which is connected to the modulator oscillator here. So let's turn down this amount to minimal. And we hear only the first oscillator. So similar to the complex oscillator, you can adjust the tune. The rate. But further, you can adjust the shape. So from sine to sawtooth um, to square and etc. So. And you can modulate that as well. And as I explained at the beginning, you, this oscillator is used to modulate by frequency and amplitude the complex oscillator. And you can set the modulation amount here, which can be further modulated as well. So to listen to that, we turn this amount uh, on this low pass gate down to zero. So we don't hear the first oscillator. We ramp up the one on the right hand side so we can hear the complex oscillator. And now we adjust the frequency modulation from the first oscillator into the second one, the complex oscillator. So the effect depends on the type of setting that you have on the complex oscillator as well. <clears throat> okay, let me show you something else now. So if we move up here, we have uh, additional modules and on the top right side, you have two function generators. Okay, so let's explain how one works and the other one works exactly the same, but it gives you the possibility to modulate further things. So it is effectively an envelope like this one, but instead of having attack uh, the case sustained release as the traditional envelope here, you have just a rise and a fall, and then you can change the shape of that um, or the curvature. So which helps in terms of rising and fall. You can see that it can be those two parameters, the rise and fall can be further modulated. You have an input, which is trigger. Okay. And then you have a cycle. You can have these going on to a cycle, so repeat itself. And then you have an output, then you have an end of rise signal and an end of cycle signal. So for purposes of a tutorial, let's connect that output to the pitch here, okay, of uh, um, the complex uh, um, oscillator. Okay, right. So now let's decrease the um, rise. Now it's on a cycle. Right? If you increase the rise, of course, it will take longer to go up and then come down. Okay, for a cycle to continue, therefore, that is why uh, the repetition happens lower. Okay, uh, of course, I, it would be better if I deleted the connection. And let's also delete, delete this connection as well, like so. Okay. Okay, so you can choose uh, different parameters, of course, you don't have to modulate the pitch, you can modulate, for example, the modulation here from an FM perspective. So it really depends on what you are trying to achieve. So let's disconnect that one. Okay, let's uh, reconnect the pitch here. Like so. Okay, perfect. Now I want to show you something else as well. You have a sequencer here. Okay, this is a four step sequencer, you have an input step which moves uh, the 
in a sequence to the next step, starting from the left to the right, you have reset input, you have the output here, and then you have a further trigger as well. So let's say, for example, that we are going to take the clock here, which will come from AUM. We put it on uh, the step there, and then we connect the output here to the pitch there. Let's click play. Okay, and um, let's um, make some changes there. And then let's increase the level here. Of course, I could have pr pressed a key as I was doing a moment ago for the function generator. So in that case, I would send the signal for the gate here and the gate will open the amount. And that is what I was doing earlier when I was uh, um, connecting the function generator directly to the pitch. So I had to press on a key on the keyboard on my external controller to hear the difference. But of course, you can ch change statically the level of that, uh, the output level of the complex oscillator in this case. And of course, you need to have uh, um, the transport uh, on for the clocks to be generated, which comes from here, which comes from AUM. Okay. Something else as well that uh, you could do is, for example, let's disconnect uh, and that pitch there. And let's connect, for example, um, why not? Let's connect um, the output from the function generator to the input of the randomizer, which randomize effectively um, signals. Okay. Then let's take the output here. We go to uh, the input of this quantizer. Okay. And here you can adjust the rate at which randomization happen and also how wide the range in, is in terms of randomization. The quantizer is used to quantize a note to the keyboard which is selected here. You have a trigger as well, and you have an output which can connect to the pitch here. Okay, so let's try. Of course, this works if I put the function generator on a cycle because it will let rise, fall, and then those value happens in in this way, right? But you could also Instead of having connected to the output there, you can have it connected, for example, at the end of a cycle, like so. Okay. You can hear that it's changing um, based on the cycle, of course, which is generated by this function generator. And of course, you can change the note here. So, for example, I say I don't want to have an A flat um, and there, not that note, something like that. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. how I'm changing the wave that it changes the range. It makes it bigger in terms of selection of the type of pitch, which will be um, changed here in the complex oscillator. Of course, I'm using the end of cycle from here, but I could have used also the end of rise as well. Okay, the, the other... Sorry, the other modules which I have uh, not uh, explained are the delay and the reverb. So these are just effects, okay? So you can adjust the dry and wet effect. So let's reconfigure this a little bit. Let's um, disconnect... Uh, these these uh, lines because we don't need them any longer okay perfect we have uh, just the external controller controlling it. so controlling the complex uh, oscillator and the modulation uh, oscillator so let's change the mixture this is your drive and wet uh, effect for reverb 
You can change the cutoff, of course, for frequency. And the feedback in terms of the ratio. You can also change, have um, a delay um, effect applied. Let's change the dry wet effect here. You can change the timing. And the length in terms of feedback. Perfect. Finally, something that I haven't uh, showed you yet is the trigger divider. Okay, so an example on how to use that would be, for example, let's disconnect the uh, clock directly on the steps. Well, let's connect that clock directly to the input of the divider and let's divide the signal by, for example, two. Okay, and so we take the half exit and we connect it to the step instead. And then we take the output from that sequencer into the complex generator, okay? Remember, this will work only when you have AUM transport uh, controls on because you're taking the clock, okay? And the last uh, um, module is these um, attenuate verters, and this is where you can actually change the um, the levels, okay? So, which uh, is um, it's quite interesting as a module. So you have input and output, so you can take the input and output it again, um, again by changing the level, okay? What other signal which is coming in, and then output itself, which can become very handy. And finally, you have an output signal as well, or dial, which you can change overall. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and you found that useful. And as always, see you next time. Thank you. Bye.